Carving in the round is the most difficult method of carving. It requires well-developed craft skills and a good sense of proportion. Keep to simple solid designs when learning this method. Avoid designs with deep undercutting or weak sections as they may break while you are carving. Obtaining pieces of wood that are thick enough to carve can be expensive. The solution to this is to glue and clamp thin pieces together instead. In this clip he will demonstrate how to do this. To begin, simply apply wood glue evenly onto one of the surfaces as shown. Then simply place another piece on top of this and ensure that the edges line up with each other. Repeat this process to achieve the desired width. Then it is time to clamp the pieces together using clamps similar to the ones here. Before you apply the clamps, make sure that all the edges are lined up correctly. Apply the clamps evenly around the piece. Leave the glue to fully dry for 4 to 5 hours after clamping. The next steps are similar to relief carving. First we must transfer the chosen image onto the wood using carbon paper. However, the difference between the two types of carving is that this type is three dimensional. Therefore, he must transfer more than one image onto the wood. It is recommended that you apply three images onto the workpiece. They are the front view, side view and the rear view as shown here. Once again, tape the carbon paper and the image onto the piece to prevent movement. Then trace around the image using a pen or pencil. Next, we will move on to the side view of the drill. Using the same procedure as before, trace it onto the side of the workpiece. Now there is only one view left to do. 
the rear view. Instead of redrawing it, here is an easier method. Using the front elevation shown, simply cut it out using a pair of scissors. In doing this, we can obtain a rear view of the drill by turning the paper around. But before he can trace around this rear view, he needs to obtain some reference points from the front view. So to do this, he picks four points on the front view and labels them 1, 2, 3 and 4 as shown. He then transfers these to the other side using a tri-square. At this point you can see why it is important to line up the edges of the timber before clamping. If you didn't, it would be impossible to transfer these points to the rear view accurately. When you have brought these reference points around, it is only a matter of fitting the cutout onto them and proceeding to trace around it. The initial shaping could be done by carving large amounts of waste, but it is quicker to cut most of it away using the bandsaw. Before using this machine, you must ensure you are wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, such as the safety glasses and dust mask shown here. You must then adjust the height of the blade guard as shown. The final precaution you must take before starting is to turn on the dust extractor. Feed the work into the blade at a very slow rate and keep hands well back from it at all times. Next, he makes a series of cuts at regular intervals. This will make it easier to cut around the profile later on. Be careful not to cut past the profile when doing this, 
Also, take care when going back along the cut. Here we see the series of cuts that have just been made. He will now make similar cuts on the other side of the profile. Having completed the sectional cuts, he is now ready to cut around the profile. Begin cutting on the wayside of the line as shown. The sectional cuts ensure that there isn't too much pressure on the blade when cutting the curves. Note the position of his hands while cutting. They are always kept a safe distance from the blade. Always use a push stick or some waste wood to remove the cutoffs from the blade as shown. It will probably be necessary to make extra sectional cuts as you see fit, such as the one seen here. Having cut around the profile successfully, he has now completed the initial shaping of the drill. He has now finished using the bandsaw so he can turn off the extraction fan. Having cut out the profile, it is now time to begin carving. He will now carve out the rough shape of the drill. First he must mark out a rough profile of the original object on the sides. This can be done using calipers like the one shown here. He also has an actual drill to take the rough measurements from. Use the calipers as directed here and apply the widths onto the side of the profile.
Refer to the side view drawing for extra help and try applying a good sense of proportions when sketching. Continue this procedure on the other sides too as shown. Remember this is a rough shaping so it doesn't need to be completely accurate. Like the other carving projects, make sure the piece is secured before carving by clamping it to the desk or putting it in a vise. Then, using a gouge, he removes the edges of the profile down as far as the line. By using a mallet, it is easier to control the amount of wood he removes. Don't be afraid to experiment with other types of gouges at this early stage. Here we see that he finds the spoon gouge easier to work with. Once again, it is important to emphasize the need for patience when carving. Removing small pieces at a time will reduce the chance of a mistake being made. Even after carving one edge, we can already see the drill taking shape. As you work, keep looking at the shape from several angles and compare to the actual object. He has now completed the rough shaping of the drill as shown here. The next step is modelling. This consists of carving using surform tools and sanding in order to achieve the finished shape of the drill.
When using seraphim tools, hold them in a similar way to holding the plane. One hand is placed on the handle and the other at the front of the tool to guide it. Here we see that he uses the seraphim tool to his advantage when shaping curved areas of the drill. Note the motion of his arms when working on a curved surface. Remove the piece from the vise regularly to examine the progress of your work. The last thing you want is to take too much material off. Study the actual drill and try to copy as many details as possible onto your own carving to make it more realistic. Here he uses a chisel to add in any fine detail to the drill. As your work nears completion, it may become difficult to hold the vise, therefore you must be more cautious as you work. Try to work on the areas closest to the vise to counteract this. When the piece is looked at closely, it is obvious that seraphim tools do not leave a good finish on the timber, therefore it must be sanded before he is finished. As the dust particles from the MDF can be harmful if inhaled, a dust mask must be worn before he begins sanding. When sanding a hardwood, always try to sand in the direction of the grain for the best finish. And now we have the finished drill. A painted finish or varnish could also be applied for extra effect if you wish. So to recap, here are the main steps involved with carving in the round. In this DVD we have discussed four different carving methods. They are incise carving, chip carving, relief carving 
and carving in the round. Keep these in mind when designing future projects. Even the simplest forms of carving can enhance the appearance of a project. Keep the design simple and practice the cuts on waste wood before applying them to your finished project.